What is good friends, we are back more World Cup action. This time we have a tiebreak game between Brofist from US Northeast and Lero from Germany. And this is a round robin tiebreak, there's three countries, US West is the third country. And they all play each other. And the person that wins the round robin, um, that country moves on to playoffs. And the other two countries, they play each other afterwards. And I think a best of three. So uh, this is the first game of that, and after that, Lero is gonna play um, the the US West guy. I think his name is like JYH or something like that. And Brovis is gonna play the other guy um, later. I think um, at 10 p.m. East or something like that. So yeah, looking at the teams, we see two cool teams. Uh, Mammoth One is gonna go in. When Mammoth One comes in on like the Tangros or on the Landris, can potentially put in work. And yeah, Brovis uh, most likely has a Mega Alakazam, which is a big threat for Lero's team. It doesn't even have to rely on hitting Focus Blast um, versus Ferrothorn because he can trap the Ferrothorn with the Magnezone. He only has to hit Focus Blast versus the Tren. But yeah, looking at Lero's team, it could be Rocks, Mammoth Swine, and then um, the Clef could be a Calm Mind variant. Like, basically, Clef gets the extra move slot. It could either be Calm Mind or T Wave or something like that. I'm not sure yet. Uh, if rocks are on the mammoth one and then probably uh, spikes ferrothorn a mega ladias and then um, a defog tornadoes that is most likely a zemoth tornadoes and um metronome mammoth one lefties on these two and then the heatran the heatran um is if the torn is not zemoth the heatran could be zemoth but i think the heatran is probably choice scarf because that's the only one that is usually used as a choice scarf user on Lero's team. Like the Ladi is not gonna be scarf, it has to be Mega Ladi on his team. Um, it's his way of checking Heatran or dealing with Heatran. But yeah we see Magnuson versus Mammoth One lead. Um, Lero doesn't wanna stay in here because if the Magnuson is scarf, Mammoth One just dies to Flash Can. So I assume he's gonna pull a switch into either um, his his Heatran or maybe I think he could go Tornadoes as well. I think Tornadoes is a good mid ground um, because it covers a potential double that Brofist can make. Um, let's say Brovis wants to predict the Heatran here. He could double into, um, into Alakazam or Landris. And I think Lero going into Tornadoes is a good mid-ground play. Because if Brovis stays in here, he's going to click Flash Can. And if he switches, he's going to go either Zam or Landris most likely. Because that covers the Heatran. Um, so he does switch into Landris and Lero just goes in the Heatran and plays it safe. So Brovis um, goes Landris there because... It um it covers the heatran switch and he knew that the mammoth swine wasn't gonna stay in because he doesn't know um if the magnus on scarf he obviously doesn't want to lose his magn his mammoth swine turn one. So Brofus puts a great double there. And so this this turn is mostly choice scarf. Uh, we don't know if Brofus Landris is scarf. I assume this Landris is not choice scarf because it's his only rocker. Um so I assume that maybe the Greninja is the scarf on Brofus' side and Magnuson could also be scarf, but we have to see. And the Heatran is Choice Scarf HPIs and kills the Landris. I did not see that coming. I was gonna say, I don't think Overheat Okoth, and I was gonna say, Bro Lero might have to switch out here. But he pulls up with Scarf HPIs. Um, Brofus stayed in. Um, either going for Rocks or um, maybe for Earthquake. I assume he went for Rocks there, potentially breeding a switch into the Tornadoes or the Ladi. He could have also potentially gone for Hard Z Fly there if he Z Fly, which I think he is probably. Most likely Zemo Landris, but yeah, now um, Brofus can go into either Greninja um, or Alakazam. I think Alakazam is a good option here. Uh, Lero doesn't have good switch-ins for Alakazam. He can probably uh, click Shadow Ball here if he goes Alakazam. He goes Greninja, okay. So he goes Greninja, and this is either Choice Scarf or... Um, if it's not Choice Scarf Protein, then it's probably Ash. But Lero is most likely going to go to Ferrothorn here. Uh, so if this is Choice Scarf, we could see a U-turn from Brofist, and then he could potentially trap the Ferrothorn with the Magnezone. Uh, so I guess Lero might not want to go Ferrothorn and get trapped. He might he might want to go Clefable here, uh, but uh, that's actually too risky though. But I assume we see some sort of wild prediction from Brofist, like a U-turn or a double switch. He goes for Spike, okay. So he is Spikes, and we see he's not Protein, so he's Ash Greninja. I thought he would be Scarf because the land was probably Z-move and his team is a bit slow. But since he has Megazam that is um, naturally fast and he has a bulky core in um, maybe AV Tangros and Leftovers Finny probably. I guess he has a defensive backbone, Landros has Intimidate. So he does have defensive backbone, it's not like he doesn't have anything. So the, the Magnuson could come out here from Brofist's side. 
So Lero's play is either... Um, we could see a lead sheet or we could see Lero doubling out. I think double into um, Megalady is the option. Hmm. Double into Megalady covers, depending on his set, if it's HP Fire Lady, which is probably... it might be HP Fire. Uh, it's, it's probably like... It's probably like Surf Recover Lady and then maybe maybe Wish and Ice Beam or something like that. Oh, maybe Psychic and, I and um, Ice Beam? I don't know. But yeah, he does just Lead Sheet. Uh, Brofus goes hard into Magnezone, traps the Ferrothorne. And now we will see from the damage if this is... Um, what type of Magnezone this is. And there is so much that's Choice Specs Magnezone. So th I'm really surprised Brofus is not Choice Scarf. But I assume his, his Tangros has Fizz Dev investment because... Um, he's gonna be able to kill the Pharaoh here. His uh, Magnezone not being Choice Scarf means Lero gets a double protector, which is lucky that way he can chip the Magnezone a bit more. Um, this is kind of funny to me because Brofist faced the Protect um, Therathon in the last, in one of his matches in round one where he played um, Faults. <laughs> and this time his Magnezone was able to beat the Therathon, though that in that game it couldn't beat it because it was Choice Scarf, but this time it's Choice Specs Magnezone. And yeah, now he's locked into HP Fire, so we could see Mammoth Mine or. I think Mammoth One is a good play here. You could see that come out for Lero, and probably either click Icicle Crash or get up the rocks. But yeah, what I was trying to say earlier, since this is not Choice Scarf Magnezone, Kartana is a huge threat to Brofist's team. So I think that the um, the Tangrowth might be HP Fire, and it might be Fizz Dev Tangrowth, um, because since the zone is not Choice Scarf, otherwise uh, Kartana is a really huge threat to his team. Yeah, he does go into Mammoth Swine. A Heatron was the other option, but yeah, Mammoth One is a good pick here because uh, Brofus doesn't have good answers for that. Uh, he could either Icicle Crash here, because I don't think he's gonna go Finny because the Earthquake could come out. Uh, Icicle Crash would cover him pivoting into Tangros, and if the Tangros is Fizz Death, he might want to try to pivot the Tangros in on the Earthquake or on the Rocks, and then scare the Mammoth One out with the Giga Drain. So I think you either go for Rocks here or you go for um, Icicle Crash. Because he's obviously not gonna um, gonna go Finny here on an Earthquake, I, I don't think so. Because um, Magnuson was already low and Finny, Finny is like his best way, I think, kind of to check the Tornadoes. Like, Tornadoes looks really annoying for Brofist's team. He can't really switch into that. With Magnuson being that low, Hurricane kind of does a lot to his entire team, so... He kind of needs the Finny healthy for the Tornadoes, that's how I see it at least, so I would probably go Tangros exactly. So do we see Isaac the Crash? We just see the Rocks, and um, that's a fine play by Lero. Now, um, the Tornadoes is really obvious here. Uh, so we could see... We could see maybe a double into top of Finny, anticipating the Tornadoes to come out here from Brofist, and then um, potentially try to get up a Defog with the Finny, because uh, he wants to get these Rocks out of the way. Um, another play is also, huh, like, Lero doesn't have much for the Finny, actually, now that his Ferrothorn got trapped, so he goes Heatran, wow, he goes Heatran, and we see Brofus pull a double into top of Finny, and, yeah, I thought Lero would go into Tornadoes there, because I feel like Tornadoes switches fine into Tangros, and if he doubles the Finny, then you can knock off the Finny's leftovers, now Brofus can go for Divo, okay, this works out really well for Brofus. Um, because Heatran is obviously scared out, it's most likely a Flash Can Earth Power Overheat HP Ice set. It could also be Fire Blast instead of Overheat, but usually you see Overheat on Scarf Trend. Well, at least I like Overheat. I know some people run like Flamethrower. Uh, ABR runs like Lava Plume, I think. Lava Plume and Overheat. He runs both of those and he doesn't run HP Ice. Uh, HP Ice is really cool though to surprise catch Zygarde off guard. And Landris, as you could see earlier. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Brofus is gonna defog here. The Ferrothorn is dead, so if he defogs here, the spikes are gonna be. Um, gone for the entirety of the game. So we could see most likely the Tornadoes come out because Lero doesn't really have another way of dealing with the Tapu Fini. Uh, I guess he could go for Flash Can here, predicting the Fini go to, for, to go for Defog and get some chip on the Fini. I think Flash Can is gonna do like 35, 30% maybe. Um, this Fini might be mixed defenses with some Spadaf. Um, just looking at his team, he needs like something that can deal with Ash Greninja well, that can um, help him check Halucha, so I assume it might have some Fizz Dev as well. And he obviously needs he needs some Spadev to also check um, like stuff like Tornadoes, because Tornadoes is really annoying for his team. So Lero goes Torn, and he's either going to click Hurricane or Knockoff here. Um, I would probably just click Knockoff. Oh, well, I guess if, if this is Z Tornadoes, um, I guess he can just click Sky Strike. Yeah, he can just click Sky Strike here if this is Z Torn. Because, um, well, unless he predicts him to go into Magnezone, he just hard hurricanes. 
uh, Brofus goes for Moonblast, and that Hurricane doesn't do much, um, making me think that this Finny is maybe uh, definitely a Calm Finny, maybe even near max but death. And that Moonblast actually does a good chunk to the Tornado, so this is probably not a Helmet Torn, this is probably just an offensive Torn with um, no HP investment, because that Moonblast did a lot from the Finny, and Finny usually doesn't run any special attack investment. So, um, Lero is either gonna Hurricane here, I don't know if Hurricane can confuse in terrain, or he just knocks off to get rid of the leftovers. Uh, Brovis goes for Skull there, in case Lero wants to go into Heatran. So he shows to be Moonblast, Defox, Skull, and the last move is most likely Taunt. Um, I actually used that Finny set before, like a lot, in one of my teams. I think I uploaded with it. It's not Nature's Madness, and I know some people are not a fan of Finny without Nature's Madness. Well, actually he might have Nature's Madness instead of Taunt, we don't know that. But I think Taunt is like one of the best moves on Finny, so he probably has Taunt to stop um, mons like Clef from Calm Minding, from Softballing. Yeah, he probably has Taunt. I assume he has Taunt instead of Nature's Madness. But yeah, Lero, if he stays in here, he loses his Tornadoes. But he doesn't really have a switch in either, so I don't know. Well, I don't know if Brovis wants to stay in though, because um, he has to be careful that the Finny doesn't get too low. If this Finny gets too low, he can lose to Choice Scarf Heatran. Um, because I'm pretty sure it's Choice Scarf Heatran. Um, it outspeeds Greninja for sure, it outspeeds obviously the Magnezone and the Tangros. And I don't know if it outspeeds Mega Zam. It might outspeed the Mega Zam, especially if the Alakazam is modest. Uh, Heatran is most likely going to be able to outspeed it. And I know that um, US East, they like to run uh, modest on their Alakazam. ABR made a team that Blunder used in Smog to his finals that was. Um, also, Fizzed have AV Tank plus Modest Alakazam, and you can see those two mons here. I'm pretty sure that's uh, most likely going to be the sets. But, um, yeah, I guess Lero can either go for Hurricane or U-Turn. Yeah, Brovis does switch out. So Lero goes for U-Turn, and yeah, Brovis switches out. At first, I thought that Lero was um, kind of forced out with the Tornadoes, but if you think about it for a while, it makes sense that Brovis doesn't want to stay in there and take another Hurricane, because like I said, if the Fini gets too low, um, Brofist can potentially lose to Choice Scarf Heatran, so we have to be careful. Now we can see the um, Mammoth Swine come out, because Lero knows that the Magnezone is Choice Specs and not Choice Scarf, and I'm pretty sure Mammoth Swine is a bit faster than Magnezone. Um, another option is the Heatran, the Heatran and lock into um, Off Power or Overheat, um, or Flamethrower or whatever you have. But I think Mammoth Swine is probably the better option. Huh. Because Mammoth Swine can just, um, okay, he goes in the Heatran, okay. So he doesn't want to go Mammoth Swine and play the prediction game, I guess. So Heatran is either going to power or Fire move, so Finny comes out and Overheat comes out, and Finny can eat that up really well. Um, he overheats there in case Brofist wants to go Alakazam, anticipating the off power because Alakazam usually runs Recover these days and it would be able to eat up the off power with ease. So Brovis doubles out into Alexander that makes a power play that covers the Heatran staying in, but the Heatran was obviously going to switch out there because of the special attack drop. And it also covers Lero going um, into Clefable and into Tornadoes, because I'm um, pretty sure Psychic is going to be able to two-hit kill the Clef. Um, Lero might want to switch out into the Megalady here, anticipating a Psychic. But yeah, Brovis has no reason not to click Psychic, even if he, even if the Lady might come out. Psychic is really risk-free here, I feel like. So I assume you're just going to see Psychic, and um, that does a lot to the Clef, and Lero clicks T-Wave and misses, but why the fuck did he click T-Wave and miss the terrain, what? <laughs> uh, he might have just forgotten about that, because you don't see Tapu Fini that often in OU. I mean, it's kind of common these days, but it used to be really uncommon. Uh, maybe he forgot, he just forgot, probably. Um, that happens. Um, so now the Fable, like, he could have gone... If he had CM, he could have potentially CM'd there and then lived the next Psychic and might have been a roll. Or he could have just gone for Moonblast, try to get a special attack drop. Or he could have... I don't know. If, I don't think Heatran can Oko Alakazam with Overheat, but he could have also tried to go Heatran. Yeah, he, that's what he should have done. He should have gone Heatran last turn uh, instead of T-Waving in Misty Terrain. Or if he had CM, that would have been a potential play. Or he should have tried to get a Moonblast special attack drop, but T-Waving was the one play he should not have made. But, um... We can see the overheat here most likely come out. If Brofist knows he can live that, we could see potentially the Alakazam go for recover to get the special attack drop. But he goes Greninja predicting the overheat. That's also a good play. Um, but yeah, staying in. If he lives overheat, I don't know the calc on that. I assume it was like 80, 90 ish head calc. If he can live the overheat, then he could have stayed in and gone for recover. But I understand going Greninja, it can live any hit. Now he can scatter out with the water shuriken. 
Um, Leru can, well, with Hydro Pump actually, because the Heatron is at minus two, which means he doesn't even have to go for Water Shuriken, because even if the Heatron stays in, he can live a move. So we can see, okay, he doesn't, yeah, okay, he doesn't want to risk missing. Um, this Dark Pulse might be a roll to kill, but I don't think Brofus wants to risk it. Leru is going to be able to um, softball here up with the Clefable. Uh, Brofus just plays it safe and goes in the Magna Zone. And now it's kind of a 50-50 between Flash Cannon and Volt Switch. If you're Leru and you predict Flash Cannon, you go into Heatran. If you predict Volt Switch, you go into Mamoswine. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a coin flip 50-50 here, I don't know. So you just go Mamoswine, predicts the Volt Switch, gets the play correct, and now he's able to fire off an Icicle Crash here because he knows that the... He knows that the uh, zone has to switch out. If it stays in, it cannot do anything because it's locked into Volt Switch. And the Tangros is going to get 2 hit KO'd. Um, I assume he's just going to Icicle Crash again here. I don't know if Earthquake kills. So Icicle Crash again. Yep. Should be able to take out the Tangros. Yep. Now the um, Greninja. Greninja can come out here and click the Water move. Yeah, I think Greninja here and click Surf slash Hydro Pump. Uh, I know a lot of people use Hydro Pump on their Ash Greninja because it gets like some important kills that Surf doesn't get. Also, the timer is really low. I didn't even pay attention to that. I'm kind of tired. Um, but yeah, I like Surf personally because Hydro Pump just misses way too much. So now it's another kind of 50-50 between Dark Pulse and Hydro Pump. Um, if you predict the Dark Pulse, you go Clef. If you predict the Hydro Pump, you go Ladi. I think Brofus is just going to go for the Water move because, um, yeah, he does just go for the Water move. He doesn't want to, um, I feel like that's a fine play for Brofist because Vladi coming in is not too bad for Brofist because, um, he can just go into Alakazam here and if the Vladi is a Calm Mind Stored Power variant, then he can go Greninja later and probably wall it with that. Well, I guess, I guess it could be Calm Mind Stored Power Surf, but that set is not common at all. I think it's just a Surf, Ice Beam, Recover, and then either Wish or something like HP Fire or Psychic, something like that, that's what I think. But yeah, Alakazam can go for Shadow Ball, Lero just went for a Roost. Uh, Shadow Ball does like 45 to 50, I think, from Alakazam. So, you can just go for Shadow Ball, see how much it does, potentially get a Spadef drop. That is so much, um, confirming that is modest, yeah, I talked about it earlier, that is most likely modest. The, the card that I said was for Timid, the, the 45 to 50, but 57 confirms that he's modest Alakazam. And he got a high roll, I'm pretty sure, and he goes for Surf there, um... Which means he most likely doesn't have, yeah, he doesn't have Draco. Like these Ladies, they usually don't carry um, Draco. Like sometimes they carry Draco to help with like Cure matchup and like Medicham matchup, but usually it's uh, just like Surf plus Ice Beam or Surf Psychic HP Fire, something like that. So Brofist goes for Recover there. Um, I don't know if he predicted the switch, but if he did, really well played. And if Psychic kills from here, Brofist can calc it. Then Psychic is definitely the play. I think Psychic kills because um, the Tornadus is. Not in not, not HP invested most likely from the damage that the Finny did to the Tornadoes. So Lyra goes in the Heatron there is able to live the Psychic. I don't know why he went Torn in the first place. Uh, I guess to just get Regenerator. Now Overheat, um, he can just recover up. Yeah, he breaks the Overheat and recovers up. That's what That was the play that I thought he would have made earlier where he switched out into Greninja. Um, as you can see it only does 80% so Brofist knows it doesn't kill. Yeah, I was thinking it would do like 80 to 90% just from a head cult. And Brofist can... Either recover again or he can just click Psychic here. Uh, Lero is probably going to switch out because he wants to save the Choice Scarf Heatran. It's the only thing that outspeeds the Zam. Just clicking Psychic was a fine play, yeah. Yeah, that was a fine play because if he clicked Recover there, then he would not have Oko the Torn. So I actually have to say, um, I said that wrong there. Yeah, Brovis made the correct play. And now the Alakazam is in range from Overheat. So Brovis is going to switch here into either the Finny or the Magnus Zone. Um, well, the Magnus Zone is like one way to like destroy the Clefable. So, yeah, it makes sense that he goes Finny instead. Um, so, Finny with the leftovers. Oh, the leftovers got knocked off. This is a roll to kill. Uh, Lero doesn't want to risk it, obviously. And he doubles back into Alakazam, knowing that if the Heatran stays in, he can eat it because it's at minus two. And if Lero goes out into, um, like, Clef, Mammo, whatever. Um, yeah, like, he wasn't going Mammo on a Finny, my bad. But if he goes, like, Clef, which was the most likely switch, and he's not going, like,. The other ones, like Ladi and Mammo, can both get hit super effective by the Finny. So he wasn't going to this, to those two. He was obviously going to Clef there. And um, Alakazam covered the Heatran staying in and covered the Clef. And now we can just click Psychic here. And I'm pretty sure two it kills the Clef with ease. Uh, so Moonblast, he's fishing for the special attack drop. He does get the special attack drop. So this is a roll, I think, because it did 59. This might be a roll. So if Lero gets a good roll, he can a low roll, he can potentially lift this. Uh, softballed up. So that was a clutch drop, drop but... <laughs> 
I messed up my words there, but Brovis gets the roll. Re um, good roll for Brovis. I think that decides the game pretty much, because now uh, he can either sack the Finny or the Magnezone. And then he can go into Greninja and scare us out with Water Shuriken. So he sacked the Magnezone to off power. So he has to go Greninja here. Since his Alakazam is obviously low, he was forced out by the Heatran. Uh, was in range from off power. Pretty sure the Finny's at 12%, which means it's in range as well. So he can go Greninja here. And then um, he's kind of forced to click Water Shuriken because if he doesn't click it and Larry stays in, Brofist might just lose to the Heat. Yeah, he just loses if he. So if he goes Gren here, which is, I think, his only play. And he clicks water. Sh he doesn't click water shrieking. He just loses if Lero clicks elf power. So I think he has to. I think Lero should um, just go into Ladi on the Grinja. Yeah, he should just go Ladi here because Brofist is 100% going to water shrieken here because he just straight up loses if Lero um, stays in on a non water shrieken. So the, the I think I would just go into Ladi here if I'm Lero, but I don't even know if that can. Let's say you go to Ladi here. It's at 43%. I don't know if that can live to water shrieken. It might be able to live to water shrieking because Megalady has great speed death. If it's able to live to water shrieking, then you can recover up. Um, but Brovis then is probably gonna sack the Finny to the Ladi and then afterwards go into Alakazam to get a recover up. And I think the Alakazam plus Greninja still wins Brovis the game though. I think Brovis is in a really good position. Lero just stays in and Brovis is gonna get Ash from and I'm pretty sure this game is over now. So he's forced into Megalady now. But his only way of can somehow winning this. Unless he doesn't live to Water Shuriken, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But I think he lives to Water Shuriken because Megalady has great speed death. It might have been a roll, I might be wrong here. I'm just head calking. Um, but now Shadow Ball is going to do a fuck ton. And he went hard into Alakazam, breaking the recover. And now Greninja can just come in and click Dark Pulse and get a kill here. So, this game is over here. Yeah. So he just clicks Dark Pulse. If the Ladi gets sacked, then the Mammoth one has to like Ice Shot crit the Greninja. But he doesn't even have to risk getting Ice Shot Crit. I don't know if Ice Shot Crit would even kill. But if Ice Shot Crit has a chance to kill, so he sacks the Ladi, now he's to go Mammo. And he has to like Ice Shot Crit. But Brovis can just switch out, sack the Tapu Fini to prevent risking getting Ice Shot Crit. So he can switch out, sack the Fini, come back in and click Water Shuriken, and then he just wins the game guaranteed. Um, that way he doesn't have to risk dying to a crit. Like I said, I don't know if a crit would even kill. <laughs> I don't have the calculator here. Um. But yeah, this was well played by Brofist. I feel like Lero, um, the turn where he t the Misty Terran sucked a lot for him. And also, um, there was another turn, but I forgot. Like, Lero um, had an early good lead with um, HP Icing the Scarf. Um, yeah, so just Earthquakes. Oh, yeah, 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 basically, I don't know if Dark Pulse... I didn't think... I didn't talk about that. But yeah, Water Shrink is going to win Brofist the game. I didn't talk about that, but I don't know... If um, Dark Pulse would have killed the Mammoth Run from that range, um, I'm gonna pause it real quick and we're gonna go to the calculator because <laughs> I thought Dark Pulse guaranteed kills the Mammoth Swine, but yeah. Brovist obviously made the correct play. Um, if Dark Pulse is a roll to kill the Mammoth Swine, then you obviously have to switch out, come back, and click Water Shuriken, which is your guaranteed way of winning. And also, if Dark Pulse, even if Dark Pulse kills the Mammoth Swine, you don't want to risk getting Ice Shot Crit. Then I'm gonna pause it. We're gonna go to the calculator because I'm a I want to make sure I didn't say the too many wrong calcs. Okay, so the first calc that I have here is Greninja's Water Shuriken versus Megalady. Megalady could have um, came out on the Water Shuriken earlier when it was 30 at 30, 43%, and it would have been able to live to Water Shuriken. But even if he went Lady on the Water Shuriken, actually this is Ash Greninja. It wasn't even Ash yet, I think. I don't remember. But yeah, um, I don't think it mattered. Could Brovis had it? I think Brovis had that game wrapped up with the combination of Alakazam. And Greninja at that point, but maybe maybe I'm missing something. But basically, um, what I was gonna calc is Greninja versus Mammoth Swine, just for my own knowledge, right? So Dark Pulse um, would have killed the Mammoth Swine uh, from Ash Greninja, but I shot. Uh, does I shot kill with a crit? I shot crit. Oh, this is life orb, by the way. Yeah, I shot crit would not have killed, but Brovis didn't want to risk anything, and he just made his way of guaranteed winning the game with Water Shuriken. So yeah, it was the correct play anyway. The yeah, Eyeshot Crit would not have killed if I see this correct. The Mammal usually runs Jolly as well. I don't know why this is adamant. As a UU said, UU said. There was another cult that I wanted to run. I don't remember which one, let me see. Okay, basically I didn't want to run a cult. I just wanted to talk about something in the game. 
It was huge that the Magnezone was choice specs and able to beat the Ferrothorn down. Um, if the Magnezone was choice scarf and the Ferrothorn might have been able to beat it 1v1, I don't know. Maybe it would have beaten the Magnezone, but it would have weakened it like super low. Basically, what I'm trying to say, um, Magnezone trapping Ferrothorn opened up the game for Ash Greninja, so that's a cool core on Brofist's side. I um, tried to build with that the other day and it didn't really work out. It's kind of hard to build with, I feel like. But yeah, I was also a bit con surprised slash confused um, by the fact that Brofus didn't have a choice scarf user. He was Specs Magnezone, then I thought maybe, um, since he Specs Magnezone and Slando is obviously Z-move most likely because it was his rocker. I thought that maybe he would be um, choice scarf Greninja, but he was Ash Gren. But to be fair, he did have a defensive backbone. He did have Mega Alakazam, which is relatively fast, even though he runs Modest, which I think speed ties with Ash Greninja. But yeah, still relatively fast, and he also has priority in Water Shuriken from Greninja. And it's also a matchup pick, like, you probably saw, um, he looked through his opponent's game, what does he like to use. Um, maybe he saw he didn't necessarily need a Scarf there. But I'm a really big fan of uh, Z-Move Landorus, actually. A lot of people only use Choice Scarf these days. And Z-Move is, like, un kind of underrated, even though people know it's good, people still don't use it. I get it why, um, Scarf Landorus is really splashable. But, yeah, like, if he didn't get caught off guard there by the Choice Scarf HP Ice, um, losing his Landorus early in the game, he could have um, definitely gotten a kill with Z-Move. Like, Z-Move Landers gets a kill most games. Um, especially versus, like, like a lot of people just sack their Bulu versus Landers. They don't even scout for Z-Fly. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. This basically means um, US Northeast is 1 0 now, Germany is 0 1, US West is still 0 0. Um, Lero plays in a few minutes versus this JYH guy. And if Lero wins, that would mean Germany would be 1 1. And. US West would be 0-1 and US Northeast would is 1-0. So the the last game, which is Brofist vs. JYH or JHY, whatever, that game is after. And if JHY can then beat Brofist, every team would be 1-1-1, which means they would have to restart the best of three. Uh, the, the the round robin, my bad, whatever. But if um if what's it called? If Lero loses his game versus the US West guy, then Germany is already um, out in this round robin. And um, then I think Brofist, um, if the US West guy beats Brofist, then, then it would be, I'm a bit getting, I'm getting confused with this, but I think Germany would definitely be out then, and I think if the US West guy beats Brofist, then they might have to play again. If they're both 1-1, but Germany is 0-2, then US West and Use Northeast might have might have to play again. Basically, even the team the team that loses this um, this tiebreak, I can show you guys real quick. The team that loses this um, is not out of World Cup yet. The team that loses this, all three teams play best of one round robin to determine uh, determine the seventh seed, right? And the team that loses this, the two remaining teams that lose, will play a traditional tiebreak to determine. I'm, I'm sorry for bad English here. Um, who advances at the 8th seed, right? So basically, you guys can read this here and understand it for yourself because I know my English is bad, I'm really tired. I know my English is not that bad, but at the moment it sounds really bad. Because um, I woke up at 5 a.m. and now it's already evening. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed. It was a fun match. And stay tuned for more content. Have a fantastic day, friends. Goodbye.